Chairman, we're ready to start this morning, this afternoon's meeting of the Governance and Ethics Committee. I'm going to hand you over to Stephen Chard, who's going to read out a message to explain how the meeting will be conducted and um, explain a little bit about everybody that's present here today. Over to Stephen. Thank you. Uh, it's good afternoon. I'm Stephen Chard. I'm clerking this afternoon's Governance and Ethics Committee meeting, and I welcome you all to the meeting. Uh, I'm assisted by Phil Rimmons, who is acting as the Zoom host and assisting the chairman as I'm about to describe. The meeting will be chaired by Councillor Jeff Beck and Councillor Jeremy Cotton as the vice chairman. The other members of the committee present are Councillors James Cole, Tony Linden, Tom Marino, David Marsh, Adrian Abbs and Joe Stewart. We also have two parish council representatives on the committee, Councillors Barry Dickens and Jane Langford. The parish councillors are permitted to speak at the meeting, but they are unable to vote. Officers advising the meeting are Joseph Holmes, Andy Walker, Shannon Coleman Slaughter, and Julie Gillespie. Shira Sheikh will be the legal advisor to the meeting. Also in attendance are Barry Morris and David Johnson from our external auditors, Grant Thornton. Councillor Ross McKinnon is attending the meeting as an observer. He will therefore only be permitted to speak on any matter if he's invited to do so by the chairman. I, next, I move to some reminders to members and other attendees about the way we conduct council meetings via Zoom. The meeting is being webcast and recorded. So if any of the attendees do not wish to have their image broadcast, I ask that you turn video off to the bottom left of your screen and remain in the meeting via audio only. Please can I ask members to make a note of your meeting ID. This can be found in the top left-hand circle of your screen, a small eye within a circle. This will be of assistance if you experience any technical difficulties and need to join the meeting by telephone only. Please ensure you have clicked participants at the bottom of the screen so that you can see a list of attendees on the right-hand side of your screen. Phil Rumors will be controlling audio. All of you, except the chairman and myself, are currently muted. He will unmute you when you are asked to speak by the chairman and then re-mute you when you have finished speaking. If anyone wishes to speak, please use the raise hand at the bottom, excuse me, lost my, lost my page for a moment. Yeah, please use the raise hand at the bottom of the participants list. This will give an indication against your name on the participants list. I will then notify the chairman you wish to speak. If the chairman has not noticed, you have your hand up. The chairman will then invite you to speak in the order he deems most appropriate. Once you have finished speaking, the host will cancel your raise hand indication. I don't think this applies to anyone uh, regards telephoning in. I think you've all zoomed in. Um, but if for any reason someone has to telephone in, then I'll ask the chairman to ensure that uh, you're asked if you wish to comment. Any voting necessary will be take place for a name to vote on each item. Members will be asked in turn by the legal advisor how they vote. And once a muted, they will indicate if you're for or against the proposal or you wish to abstain. Unless the committee asks for the vote or did the outcome of the name vote will not appear in the minutes. So anyone wishing the vote to be recorded must indicate this before the vote is taken. If we need to adjourn the meeting at any point, the chairman will adjourn and advise the committee of the revised time and date of the meeting. If it is a short adjournment, you'll be able to rejoin this Zoom meeting. Otherwise, a fresh appointment will be sent out. I'm pleased to say that's me finished. Um, but do members have any questions about the way in which the meeting will be conducted? I see Councillor James Cole has his hand raised. Councillor Cole, you wish to speak? On a brief point before the main meeting starts, but I didn't in fact intend to have my hand raised at that point. Would you like me to do the point that I intended to cover anyway before the main meeting started. It would be useful, uh, Councillor. I think yes. Thank you, please. The um, the agenda this time. Uh, now that we have to deal with everything electronically, the paging is a bit of a pain. Um, I tend to go through a, an agenda, make notes about what I might or might not want to comment on. Um, and the paging on the document does not agree with the electronic paging. As page one is on page 
five electronically. If that Chairman, could... Chairman, we'll have to deal with that as a separate matter, I think, outside of the public meeting. Okay. Uh, okay, thank, thank you. Yeah. Councillor Cole, we will deal with that outside of the meeting uh, in the very near future. Okay. Fine. Thank you. Can we now carry on with the meeting? No, no, no thanks. Right. Um, <clears throat> um, can I ask the clerk, uh, do we have a, any apologies uh, tendered uh, for the, uh, this afternoon's meeting, please? Yes, Chairman, we do. Uh, apologies received from Councillor Andy Moore. Councillor Adrian Abbs is substituting. Also an apology from Councillor Jeff Mays. Thank you very much indeed. And Chairman, we've had an apology from Jane Langford as well, our parish councillor. Right, thank you. Thank you very much. We we'll move now to item two. That's the uh, minutes of the uh, meeting held on the 10th of February. Um, I have been through them and they, to me, they appear to be uh, an accurate record of what took place. Um, could I possibly have a proposer and seconder for the, those minutes, please? Can everybody hear me? I have raised my voice, uh, Chairman. So is, that, is that proposer from Councillor Abbs, seconded by Councillor no, Lindbergh? No, 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 it is not. I've raised my hand. Oh, I'm sorry. Apologies. Right. Okay. Councillor Rouse, do you, you have something to speak about? Yes, Chairman, thank you. Um, on reading the minutes, uh, I do not find them accurate in their representation of what they have discussed. Um, I sent a note to Moira earlier. I don't know if you received that, Moira, but um, the thing that I seem to miss, I think, remember, um, and it was a survey that meeting as well, uh, raising the issue of uh, the influenza, and I noted at the time. That um, there was an uh, uh, risk register that was not mentioned there, and um, Councillor Abbs, your your speech is coming across intermittently. I don't know whether there's anything you can do about that. Um, I'll try my best. I'll just yeah, thank you. Down. Thank you. Give me one second. Is that any better, Chairman? Yes, it is. So far, yes, thank you. Please okay. proceed. Uh, what I was saying was that um, our, at that meeting, I raised uh, a question about the um, influenza on the risk register and uh, asked whether or not uh, that was linked to the COVID-19 um, uh, pandemic that uh, was beginning at that point. Um, wasn't a constant pandemic uh, back on the 10th of February, but we came on to, um, and started talking about the PPE shortages in terms of masks and so on that would ensue. Um, but I don't see any record of that in the minutes. Cameron, I mean, if I could respond to, to Councillor Abbs, um, apologies for not coming back on your email. Okay. If you, will, if you will recall, that discussion was a part two item, and the part two item minute, the minutes are not recorded in great detail. So that discussion took place under the, the risk register, register, which was a part two item, and therefore it wouldn't have been recorded in the minutes. Mm, okay, uh, it's for future. I don't see it mentioned anywhere in any of the documentation. So how it's part two or not, I still thought we were recorded questions and answers. Um, I, do we have to go into part two to, to understand this and uh, discuss this further? I'm quite happy to do it later on if necessary. I'm happy to discuss the matter with you outside of the meeting, Councillor Ebbs. Okay, thank you very much, Maureen. Could we have a... Uh, <clears throat> I'm quite happy to propose that we adopt these meetings. Uh, could I possibly have a seconder? Yeah, I'll second it, Chairman. Right, you are. Thank you. I'll sign the minutes then. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Uh, Clark, uh, do we have any declarations of interest uh, peculiar to this uh, meeting this afternoon? Uh, we've not received any to date, no. Thank you. 
Right, we move now to item four, the forward plan. Um, can I ask uh, officers and members if you have any amendments you would like to make to the forward plan as presented to you? Does anybody wish to speak on this item? Councillor James Cole. Could his hand up? Right. Uh, Councillor Cole, would you like to proceed, please? Thank you. Uh, there's a couple of gaps in the purpose column, lines 9 and 11. In particular, why do we not show a purpose for the annual audit letter? It has a significance. Shouldn't this be explained in this public document? And we'll ensure that those are corrected um, for the next meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Moira. <coughs> Moira. Does anybody else have any uh, query? Councillor Councillor Beck, um, it's your house here. Um, in terms, uh, in relation to your earlier item um, regarding the minutes, can we please have mm -hmm. a named vote uh, following your proposal and second uh, yes right, right. Um, right can i just um, can i i'm happy to name happy to read out the names yes members um so james cole councillor james cole in approving the minutes councillor cole you're either for against yes for jeremy cotton yes Councillor Tony Linden? Four. Councillor Tom Marina? Four. Councillor David Marsh? Councillor David Marsh? Four. Thank you. Councillor Adrian Epps? Councillor Epps? Can you hear? Four. Thank you. Councillor Joe Stewart. Oh. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm afraid I have to now read out for, for the per, uh, under the protocol for these meetings. I have to read out the names for them to be recorded in this way. So apologies for that. But that's the new process in relation to these web meetings. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shiraz. Thank you. Right, you are. Um, <clears throat> members, we will now move to item four. Um, and we are here the monitoring officer's uh, annual report. Uh, in this case, the monitoring officer, Sarah Clark, has actually had to attend another meeting and uh, Shiraz Sheikh is actually going to uh, speak to us now. Um, would you like to proceed? Thank you. Thank you. Um, first of all, on behalf of the mo monitoring officer, We'd like to thank, uh, convey our thanks to the independent persons and parish council rep representatives, representatives for their contribution to the process. Um, Chairman, there are no legal uh, issues arising from this report. The report accords with the requirements of the Local Government Act 2000 and the Localism Act uh, mm -hmm. 2011 and its supporting regulations. Key findings identified in the reports are, in the report are standards of ethical uh, conduct uh, across the district remains good, and the number of gifts and hospitality declared by members appears to be low. The members uh, um, gifts and hospitality declared by direct directors also appears to be low. Um, uh, 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 and uh, vary uh, considerably. We'll be looking into that. Um, there has been increase in complaints um, um, in 1819, um, um, which is uh, similar to what we saw in, in the last local elections, um, 2015. Um, and I think this is due to the new influx, uh, influx of new members. Uh, None of the complaints seem to be significant in nature in that they did not require to be investigated. Um, we have a considerable training program for new members coming in 
and um, we will be looking at the training program again to see if we can uh, uh, offer some uh, further improvements to address this um, increase in complaints is issue. Other than that, um, 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 I commend this report to you. Right, thank you for that, uh, <coughs> Sheikh. Um, members, I, I would just like to draw your attention to the fact that we are assisted in the work of this committee uh, by the independent persons uh, who are uh, namely James Rees, Mike Wall and Lindsay Appleton. Um, when they're actually dealing with these complaints, some of them from time to time are extremely complex and very time consuming. I would also like uh, to express our appreciation on all our behalfs, uh, the four parish councillors who make a valuable contribution to the work of this committee. Um, thank you very much for that. Um, can I now throw this um, open to uh, members for any questions they may wish to uh, put before um, the monitoring officers? Please proceed. Councillor Jeremy Carr. Thank you, Chairman. Um, do we, can we get a feel for what these issues are about? Because we refer, refer to training, uh, is it particular subjects? Um, can we get a feel for what the uh, complaints are, have been about? Um, Chairman, I'm happy to respond to that. Um, the majority, the majority about, of the complaints um, against our district councillors relates to two issues. One of them is social media, the other is planning. Um, and in respect with the, with, with the uh, parish council complaints, which have actually come down this year, um, the majority of them relate to a, a single incident. So um, there, there isn't a sort of a pattern of behavior that, that could be picked up on and dealt with there. Okay. Thank you. Any other members wish to raise anything? Councillor Joe Stewart. You wish to speak? Please proceed. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, it's uh, in relation to 8.2 in the conclusion of the report, which talks about the number of declarations of gifts and hospitality from members appears to be low. I'm interested in that because one of the earlier points um, seems to suggest that it's being slightly higher than the previous period. Um, and I just wondered what our expectations are um, and actually uh, what we think high or low in this context means. Um, and also as a sort of a follow on question from that, the report also talks about the, um, the number of the, de that there isn't anything that says about the member declarations that were refused. And is that thing was declared was refused? And in terms of um, the, your second point, point Councillor Stewart, any, any declarations of interest on, that are made by members um, are recorded. And if members uh, choose not to accept a gift, that is recorded as well. And as officers, we would strongly encourage members to record, especially those ones which have been turned down on the basis that um, that there would probably have been a reason for that. So in terms of transparency, it's just as important to, rec to record those uh, gifts that are uh, turned down as those are, that are actually accepted. Of course, um, I was just interested whether we think we've got a, a gap here, because it, it seems to suggest that maybe we have, that we're not declaring enough, or maybe we're just not receiving, maybe we're in a different place now where actually um, the sort of offers are not being made. But that's fine. That that's fine. That's that's made it clearer. Thank you. You need to unmute, Chairman. Jeff, sorry, Jeff. Do you need to unmute, Chairman? No. Can you hear me? Right. 
Um, I have actually taken this issue up with the monitoring officer, um, and she, she sort of has a sort of assured me um, that possibly the the, uh, the wording in on some of these pages indicates that there is a, a quite a problem, and in reality, she does not consider there to be a problem uh, of any significance, and she does mention that the vast majority of declarations uh, are, uh, are either below the threshold of the £25 or um, very little above it. Um, and she is actually going to proceed with the officers uh, in particular uh, to ensure that there is uh, a, a definite sort of further regard given to this particular issue. Um, but, but she is she does not consider uh, to be a pr the problem which quite possibly these pages portray, if that is of any comfort to you. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to make any comment about this? Particular Councillor Tony Linden has his hand raised, Chairman. Yes, right. Please proceed. Yeah, generally, Chairman, it's on the training. I know it's suggested that we might have to revisit some training because I know some members uh, who are new to this authority might have missed uh, training sessions and uh, may also affect others. So maybe it might be an idea uh, that we could gently remind uh, members who did miss the training that it might be useful to do so again and most probably also have a convenient uh, time because some people obviously are not available during the afternoon because of work. So uh, I just thought I'd uh, mention that, Jim. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Lennon. Um, does anybody else wish to speak on this? Can I uh, check uh, with Stephen, if I may? Um, has uh, any member phoned in uh, uh, this afternoon. I'm not aware of anybody. No, no one's so everyone zoomed in. There's no, no one on the phone. No, right. Okay. Right, you are. Um, in that case, um, if nobody has got anything further to uh, raise on this, um, I'm seeking a proposer and a seconder for the recommendation, which is set out on page nine. Um, 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 our legal advisor will read out the recommendation. Thank you, Chairman. The recommendation is the content of the report to be noted. It be agreed that the report be circulated to all town and parish councils for information. Thank you. Members, can I ask you to uh, vote on the recommendation, please? Shiraz? Did we have, did we have, sorry, did we have a proposer and seconder? Oh, no, sorry, my apologies. Could I have a proposer uh, for this particular item, please? Uh, Jeremy Cotton as proposer. Yes. And I'll second, Chairman. Okay. Councillor Lennon seconded. Okay. So, named vote again, thank you. Um, Councillor Jeff Beck. For. James Cole. For Jeremy Cotton. Councillor Cotton, can you hear? I'm muted. Okay, four. I was muted. Councillor Tony Linden. Four. Councillor Tom Marino. Four. Councillor David Marsh. Four. Councillor Adrian Epps. For Councillor Joe Stewart. For thank you. The declaration, uh, sorry, the, I declare that the recommendation has been agreed. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, we'll now move to item six, which is the uh, internal review uh, of the Governance and Ethics uh, Committee. Um, my understanding is that Julie Gillespie is actually going to introduce this report. If you will proceed, Julie, please. Thank you, Chairman. 
Um, so the, the report is um, given the findings of uh, the review that Internal Audit carried out on the effectiveness of the Governance and Ethics Committee. Uh, we carried out the review um, because it was recommended as part of the external assessment we had last year. Um, and we carried out the review to um, assess where we were compared with good practice as defined by SIPFA. Um, and as part of the review has concluded that in the most cases we are um, complying with the key areas, there are some recommendations which are outlined on in section five of the main report, which is electronic page 30. And what I'm suggesting to progress the report is that the committee, <coughs> excuse me, that the committee notes the content of the report, but also considers the um, recommended actions. And there's also a need uh, for some of the points to be discussed with the chief executive to obtain his views, because there are wider governance implications. Uh, I would like to make the point that when the report went to the um, corporate board, he suggested that the officer group, the finance and governance group, um, take a lead on um, come up with some ideas of um, how to implement the detailed recommendations and then provide that information to the committee. Um, okay. So that, that's the, my main main points, if there's anybody that wishes to raise any questions. Not sure. Thank you. Uh, members, um, you'll see that the um, first recommended action uh, is basically suggested a discussion needs to take place at committee, as well as between the committee chair and the chief executive, my recommendation is that we should also include the vice chair in this meeting with the chief executive. Um, does anybody else wish to speak on this item, please? Nobody wish to speak? Uh, well, our hands have just gone up. Uh, Councillor Joe Stewart put in first. Right. Would you please proceed. Um, a couple of things. Really. Um, slightly disappointed um, that not everybody uh, felt that they needed to complete the, the self-assessment survey. Um, I think that's I think that's disappointing because um, in terms of transparency uh, and and integrity of the the committee itself um, I think it would have been good to have a broader range of people's feelings about their own um, uh, abilities and experience and knowledge that that is is used to making this committee uh, what it ought to be um, but having said that I think looking at the recommendations um, I think they all look very reasonable. Um, I'd be very interested in being part of um, any of the conversations that, that go on in regards to this, just because I think from my learning, so lead by example, I think there are gaps that I have in my knowledge. So I'd actually like to try and address those. And I think one of the best ways to do that would be in on the Sort of reshaping and reforming and enhancing of the committee so um basically i'm also raising my hand and volunteering to be a part of any groups that you might want me to be chairman so that i can help with that thank you very much for that arthur any other members wish to speak on this next in line is councillor james cole right councillor cole please proceed Excuse me Yes, it is you. Um, I thought Councillor Stewart was being a little bit nice as, uh, in a response there. In fact, I thought that our uh, Chief Auditor was also being a little bit nice. Actually, I was horrified to see the lack of response. Um, I thought, in a sense, that the report's actually quite damning, uh, that the committee conformed or partly conformed with two thirds of the good practice questions. Hmm, that's not very good. Um, 
And I think this uh, opens up a number of questions. I do think the annual review idea seems a good idea when we do get to make some changes. Um, I was even wondering um, whether or not audit should be in fact a separate committee as in a, a private company, you'd have a, um, an audit committee and a smaller one as well. So it's worth a look. Um, but there are, there are quite a lot of things that being suggested I think are great. We should, for example, to my mind, co-opt an accountant onto this. Uh, unless you, because I'm certainly not a trained accountant, whatever my wife may think about me, perhaps should have been an accountant, I'm not an accountant. Uh, and to understand and actually truly take on board much of what we are supposed to take on board, I still find difficult, in spite of having been involved in this committee on and off for five years, um, or near, near that anyway. Uh, so, yes, um, lots to do here, I think. Um, did make me comment in um, 5.1 number three, uh, well, we're supposed to comment on the risk appetite statement. Yes, well, we'd need a risk appetite statement first to comment on. We don't have that yet. And that's something I've been after for a while. Uh, so I look forward to that. But uh, my view was quite a lot tougher than the views expressed so far. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Carl. Any other member wish to speak on this matter? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. No. Councillor Abs. Oh, Councillor Abs, please proceed. Uh, thank you very much, Chairman. Um, yeah, I'm substituting for Andy Moore today, as was read out at the beginning, and uh, have done before. Um, he did send me a note uh, about this particular item. Um, because he was one of the people who didn't feel able to respond. Um, I must admit, I, I'm only a substitute here, but I, I, I do not recall receiving the, uh, the, the request to take the survey, so it may, it may be my fault and that I just missed it, um, or it may not have actually come out to me. So um, anecdotally, uh, we, we have at least one person that wasn't aware of the survey uh, before, uh, before now, i.e. myself, and one person who was considered that, that he didn't know enough about the operation of the committee to uh, make viable feedback. So it sounds a little bit like uh, James's, uh, Councillor James Cole's um, comments uh, are valid and it may well be uh, worth uh, rerunning this survey um, now that people have had a little bit more time to settle in, have a little bit more understanding because I, I, I don't know, could someone tell me when the survey actually took place? Um, I haven't I could, it's probably buried in there somewhere, but um, the net result of it is that there are definitely room for improvement uh, in, in the way that the, uh, the committee runs. And uh, we'll, I'm certainly in support of uh, enhancing its powers and how it operates. Um, but I said there was a missed opportunity to do a survey in that I certainly didn't see it myself and others seem to have felt they were um, not qualified to respond to it. So but having not seen it, I can't directly comment on that itself. Thank you for that contribution, uh, Councillor Abbott. For your information, this uh, was actually sent out uh, immediately prior to the Christmas break. And that could be one of the reasons why some people, when I say missed responding, uh, it could be one reason anyway. Could uh, easily be, Chairman. Uh, anybody else wish to speak on this uh, issue? Councillor Tony Linden's next, Chairman. Councillor Lennon, please proceed. Thanks, Chairman. I, uh, like Councillor Cole, have also served on uh, governance and audit in the past as well. I'm also on governance and audit for the uh, Royal Berkshire Fire Authority, so I'd be happy uh, to contribute if there's still space. Obviously, there needs to be opposition uh, members on that as well, and I welcome the view, Chairman, that the Vice Chairman also be invited uh, to be involved with it. Thank you. Thank you for that. 
Councillor Jeremy Cottom's next. Yes, please, Jeremy. Please proceed, Councillor Cottom. Muting, sorry, a bit slow there. Um, yeah, um, there was talk about uh, extra resources in terms of staff. Is that now guaranteed that we will get um, further um, resource in terms of people to work on these uh, reviews that we're going to be doing? Would one of the officers like to respond to that, please? I think you're probably talking about an auditor. And I, uh, without actually sort of delving through the pages, I'm pretty sure there is a proposal within these uh, pa pages to actually mm. take on a further person. It's 122 pages, and it is, as somebody has already pointed out, very difficult to actually get through this. Um, an aside is, well, maybe we need more regular meetings um, if we're going to be going through so many numbers of pages. But no, I read through the report. I'm afraid I didn't actually note this, um, the actual se section that it was in, but we're discussing it now. So um, it's just an information request uh, in the sense that we, we expect to be doing more um, and we obviously need more officer support for this. My only concern. Uh, could I, sorry, could I answer some of those queries? Um, Julie Gillespie here, sorry. Um, if you're talking about internal audit resource, uh, we, we have had um, a new post agreed um, um, from this financial year, which is, which is really good news. Um, in relation to the um, survey that went out, apologies if anybody was missed, we did send 18 out, which I thought covered all uh, members and substitutes, and we did send out a number of reminders as well. So, but apologise if we missed anybody. Thank you for that. Thank you, Jim. Is there anybody else could I think they wish to comment upon? Does Julie, do you have anything more? Your hand, oh, your hand, oh, so hands have gone down. No, there's no one else. Right, you are. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> in that case, um, we need a proposer and a seconder for the recommendation, which is set out uh, on page uh, on the copy which I've got. It's set out on twenty-one, page twenty-one. I'm happy to propose, Chairman. Thank you. Good. Thank you. And I'll second, Chairman. Thank you very much indeed. Um, can I ask our legal advisor to read out the recommendation, please? Thank you, Chairman. Um, the committee notes the content of the audit report as amended by the chair this uh, today in, uh, to include the vice chair, agrees to the recommended, recommended actions. And number three, the committee obtains the chief executive's views on the proposal and possible implications on other governance structures prior to agreeing a formal action plan. Can I have the words, please? Councillor Jeff Beck. For. Councillor James Cole. For. Councillor Jeremy Cotton. For. Councillor Tony Linden. For. Councillor Tom Marino. Councillor Marino, can you hear? Yeah, for, sorry. Thank you. Councillor David Marsh. Councillor Adrian Epps. For. Councillor Joe Stewart. For. I declare that the recommendation has been agreed. Thank you very much, uh, Shiraz. Uh, members, we'll now move to uh, item seven, which is the internal audit interim report for 2019-20. Um, once again, uh, uh, Julie, uh, could I ask you to introduce the report, please? Thank you, Chairman. Um, so the report is giving the outcome of audit work completed um, during quarter three of 2019-20. And to summarise, um, section 4.4, key, ob key observation, um, so for the work undertaken during that quarter, we have no significant issues of concern um, to, to raise with the committee. Um, section 5.2 mentions that for central audits, there are none with a weak opinion. There was one school identified as weak, 
and that was mainly due to improvements needed in the governance and the accounting and auditing of the, the school fund. Um, so that, that summarises the work um, attached to the report are two tables that list um, the completed work, the opinions, and also work in progress. Thank you very much. Uh, Julie, could I ask you actually, with regard to the uh, completed audits uh, on education, uh, the, uh, for Courage Primary School, uh, they had a, a weak uh, report. Is it possible that we can be given some information as to what is happening to bring that up, please? Uh, well, the, the standard practice is that we give schools a six month period to implement the agreed recommendations. Um, and then for any audit that is weak or very weak, we would go back and do a follow-up review. Uh, the follow-up review for the school is not yet um, due, but we Thank will be going back to, to follow it up. Thank you very much indeed. M members, uh, any questions you wish to ask of Julie Gillespie? Councillor Adrian Adams, as his chair, hand up, Chairman. Nobody? Nobody? Councillor Adrian Abbs, Chairman. All oh, right. Councillor Abbs, please proceed. Councillor Abbs? I would like to, to ask about this, this the week school and uh, the comment was made about uh, applying uh, mainly due to procedures or um, policies being applied um, who who's who is actually fixing that problem is, and whose policies are they are they going to now start to follow is it, is that an uh, west Berkshire an internal process or is that an external process coming in uh, may, may I answer that chairman yes please please do um, the, the um, areas that where we found weaknesses were to do with the internal governance, and that's more to do with the structure, the governance within the school. It is not central policies for the council, it is the governance of the school that we were making observations on um, and made recommendations for the school and the governors to, to improve the situation. So, so I take it that it was your, uh, you say we, so the West Berkshire made the recommendations on the improvement. So it's our, our decision on the process that we're going to apply. Those processes came from us. Uh, we have a standard audit program for schools where we've identified what is a legislative, legislative requirement or good practice requirement, and we measure them against those requirements. Um, so some of it would be our internal, but a lot of it is there is a lot of legislation out there about um, governance over schools, committee meetings, or what information should be provided, and they, that, that's what we measured them against. Yeah, I, I'm just looking to know, to know what help we're giving them to help them through the process so that they move out of week to something else. Is you know, you say there's lots of data out there. I'm, I'm, there's loads of stuff we can all read, but. Do we give them any more assistance and just saying you're weak, these are the area you're weak, so go fix it? Sounds like we help a bit, but I wasn't clear how much we're helping. The, uh, from my team's role, we um, try to provide quite a lot of information on the recommendation so they know exactly what they need to do. If And we have discussions with them. If they had concerns they didn't know where we were coming from or need support and they raised it, we'd either be able to help or be able to ask accountancy or education to assist as well. Thank you. Are you okay with that, uh, Councillor Abbs? Yes, thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you very much, thank you. Has anybody else got anything else they wish to raise? Councillor Joe Stewart. Right, please proceed, Councillor Stewart. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I notice on uh, in Appendix B under the current audits, um, there are uh, where the current position of work is draft report issued and the audit plan year was 2018 19. Um, and I just wondered if um, we'd be able to get a bit more information about those. Um, is it due to, for example, is it due to resource or is it due to the length of time the report might or the review might need to be done over? Um, my favourite one is GDPR because, of course, we've all been um, 
uh, through the challenges of GDPR in many walks of life. Um, so yeah, I'm just interested as to why those are still at draft at this stage. Uh, if I can respond yeah. to, yeah. Uh, to the questions. Um, there'll be a variety of reasons on some of these. Um, we did have an auditor that left last year. So if the GDPR, for instance, the auditor that was doing that piece of work left, we had to postpone it and then reallocate it um, when we appointed a new auditor. Um, the, one, um, the Better Care Fund was also the same auditor that, that left. I was looking at that one. Um, but also last year, or over the last two years actually, when we have investigation work, we have to prioritise investigation work and some of these reviews would have been postponed because of investigation work. Okay, so do we, um, we hopefully we'll be able to pick some of those up because I think we've got some more resources, am I right? We had a new post um, approved, which is brilliant news um, for this financial year. Um, we're still, if there's investigations, which are very time consuming, there still could be an impact, but okay. having an extra person will make a, a big difference on some of these reviews. But we do also have issues sometimes with services. If they've got um, a priority, we'll start looking at a review and for whatever reason, um, it's not good timing for them. We do agree to postpone things and sometimes for six months or later. Um, so again, there are varied reasons why, why there are delays on some, but hopefully there shouldn't be too many that were um, relating to last year, because things have improved. Um, we have managing to turn around them quicker than we were. So there's less that are carried forward from the previous year. Okay, thank you. Are there any further uh, questions or queries, members? In that case, uh, if there are nothing further on, on this uh, particular item, uh, can I mention to you that uh, this report is to be noted, uh, but we do actually need a proposer and a seconder uh, for the recommendation, which is set out on page, on, in my case, page 49. Uh, so could I have a proposer and seconder, please? Happy to propose. Thank you. I'll be happy to second, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Lyndon. Without, um, our legal advisor. Um, nothing further to add. Uh, the report is to be noted. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, we'll now move to uh, item eight, uh, which is the internal audit plan for 220, uh, 223, uh, to 23. Is that correct? 23. Moira, can you? Uh, so, Chair, Chair, yes, it is correct. It covers the three year period. Yeah, yeah. Okay, right you are. Um, can I ask you, uh, Julie, if you wouldn't mind introducing this report as well, please? Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, so this is um, an annual report that I, I present to committee for approval, and it's setting out what um, the proposed work for internal audit over a three year period. Um, um, the report also includes um, an internal audit charter, um, which sets out the role of internal audit um, and how we um, the work um, and how we relate to the committee. Um, the only change this year to the audit charter is uh, because of the change of the section 151 officer, say the reporting line changed a little bit. Um, we also, there's also attached the reporting protocol, which shows um, how we communicate with our clients and who we copy in all our reports. Again, no major changes. The, the key one was um, the change in the Section 151 officer role. Um, the detailed work programme is set out in Appendix C, um, and that was based on us having a new post, which was agreed, so that's good. We've got, got um, you can see the difference in the coverage in the audit plan, so that, that's really good news. Um, there is a slight change in the format of how I've laid it out. There's a column um, method of review. So this is, um, sorry, page 75, the actual detailed work program. And there's a column called method of review. And in that I've put either um, 
it's an acronym, it's either short review or full review. What I'm trying to do there is um, uh, spread resource over more areas. So in some areas, we're only doing a short review rather than a full audit review. Um, and another change is in section 4.6 of the report, it mentions having an anti-fraud work plan. We've not previously had a separate work plan. Um, good practice says we should. So I've set out um, anti-fraud work as a separate plan. So committee are quite clear on the, um, the, the audit work that we're planning to do on anti-fraud work. Um, and I think they're, they're the, the key areas I needed to mention. Is there any, any questions? Thank you for that, uh, Julie. With, with regard to Appendix D, the only question of the uh, the uh, the fraud, um, anti-fraud work plan, can I ask you um, what exactly is it proposed that the external provider should engage with? Can you just elaborate on that slightly? Sorry, where, sorry, Chairman, where are you picking that up from? Uh, it's page 93, Appendix D. The anti fraud work plan. Just need to scroll down to it. It talks about, a, uh, somewhere along, it talks about an external provider should engage with it. Uh, that's to do with um, the council tax reduction scheme, and we are looking at appointing an external um, specialist in that sort of reviews to do that, that piece of work. The rest of it's internal, it was that piece of work having an external provider. Okay. Thank you very much indeed. Members, uh, do you have any questions of Julie Gillespie? Councillor James Cole. Please proceed, Councillor Cole. Thank you, Chairman. I do have several questions, if I may. Yes, please go proceed. One follows directly on on the subject of staffing. Uh, you would remember that I've raised this subject before. Am I right in thinking that before the previous manager left, you were four plus the manager then? Um, I'd be curious to know how many audit staff there were when you first joined, uh, because I have a feeling it might have been more. I, um, if you look at, for example, the key risk to be covered on electronic page 80 onwards, we see high and medium risk areas that haven't been audited for some years, uh, which I imagine you're not comfortable with. For example, IT business continuity planning is high risk, is rather topical, and hasn't been audited since 2007, 2008. Uh, I can't help wondering, therefore, um, whether one extra auditor is enough. Would you like to respond on that one? Yeah, yeah, yes, Councillor <laughs> Coe, thank you for the question. Um, I think one post is a very good starting point. Um, that brings us up to five and benchmarking with other unitary authorities of our size, that is about average. Um, we did have more um, auditors, the team was Ten, I think, when we first became the unitary authority, uh, but I'd say ten was over the, the requirement. Um, I'm very happy that we've got five, and some of these auditors, uh, sorry, some of these audits that haven't been covered for quite a while, that extra post will then decrease the um, time frame between them. So then we can catch up with those that haven't been covered for quite a while. Is the plan? I look forward to further conversations on this. I suspect. Um, where would we go to next? Um, are you happy with your new reporting line? The reporting line is something that was picked up in the new ways of working report um, that it needs reviewing. Um, what has happened in the audit charter at the moment is sort of um, like a temporary measure until a full review that can look at it. Okay. Um, there is a new risk register. You appear to be using it. Are you finding it more effective? Any more useful? Uh, it's more comprehensive. There's the, the process is more comprehensive. 
Um, we have in the audit plan for the current financial year also got a review of risk management to look at and assess um, the new process that um, Cattle in Bogus has put in place. I look forward to uh, hearing the results of that. Um, Appendix A and B, not new, but revised. When did this committee last review those? Those documents are presented every year. I, re I review, revise them and present them every year. That's not the question I asked. Sorry. Um, when did this committee last get to review those documents? Because I don't remember seeing them before. Uh, sorry, if this is the charter and the reporting protocol. They're presented as draft to the committee every year for comments. So it's not just me presenting them saying this is a fait accompli. They're presented for um, okay. approval or otherwise. Okay. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much, Councillor Cole. Anybody else got any uh, questions or queries on this uh, agenda item, please? Stephen, has anybody put the hand up? Uh, no one else. With everyone. Oh, no, hang on. Jeremy, Councillor Cotterman, is just putting his hand up. Right, you are. Jeremy, would you like to proceed? Yes. Uh, on general principle, that um, my experience is in quality management within engineering and production. But for a quality manager, um, people looking at risks and performance uh, and such as we have in this committee, they always had a direct feed into the chief executive officer of that particular company um, on certain subjects. Uh, it's just observation really that um, it's very important where uh, our audit officers report to, and it should be as senior as possible. Thank you. Thank you. So there's nobody else um, wishes to actually uh, raise any issue. Um, we need a proposer and seconder for the recommendation, which is set out uh, at the, the first page of agenda item eight. In my case, it's on page 57. Could I have a proposer, please? Thank you, Councillor Cotton. And a seconder? Happy to. Thank you very much indeed. Um, could I ask our legal advisor to read out the recommendation, please? Yes, certainly, Chairman. Uh, the audit plan, the amended internal audit charter and internal audit report protocol be approved, subject to the inclusion of the proposed amendment to the Thank they you. are sort of named um, vote now, um, starting with Councillor Jeff Beck. For. Councillor James Cole. For. Councillor Jeremy Cotton. For. Councillor Tony Linden. For. Councillor Tom Marino. For. Councillor David Marsh. For. Councillor Adrian Ebbs. For. Councillor Joe Stewart. Oh. Thank you. I declare that the recommendation has been agreed. Thank you very much indeed. Um, we'll now move to uh, agenda item nine, which are the financial statements, the preparation uh, and the final audit for 2018-19. Um, can I ask, uh, are Barry Morris and David Johnson present? They wish to speak, our auditors. Yes, you are right. Uh, in that, that case, uh, members, uh, the external auditors, Barry Morris and David Johnson, um, I believe, wish to speak on this item. Accordingly, we will need to, uh, to suspend standing orders to allow them to do so. Could I have a proposal that we uh, suspend? Standing orders, please. The proposed chairman. Seconded. Thank you. Uh, Shiraz, do we need to, to take a vote on this? I think we better. So, Council, I'll start with you, Chairman. Councillor Jeff Beck. Uh, four. Councillor James Cole. Councillor Cole. Can you hear Councillor Cole? Leave him for a second. 
Councillor Cole, you're mute. I now unmute. It's the problem of getting one's cursor back from one screen to the other. <laughs> we get used to it after a while. <coughs> oh. Councillor Jeremy Cotton. Oh. Councillor Tony Linden. Four. Councillor Tom Marino. Four. Councillor David Marsh. Yeah, Councillor Marsh. Councillor Marsh. Four. Councillor Adrian Ebbs. Four. Councillor Joe Stewart. Four. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can I ask the officers who is that? Is, it, is Shannon actually going to introduce this report? I am. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Please. Um, this is a combination report. It is to confirm to members that we now have the final audit opinion for financial year 1819 and to show how we are preparing for the 1920 uh, production of the financial statements in response to the recommendations made by Grant Thornton um, from our 1819 audit. Um, it is a to note report. Uh, the key areas for members to look at to be section 4.1 on page 97 of the report electronically, that's page 101, which sets out the final opinion from Grant Thornton that it was a true and fair opinion. Um, and we had undertaken the uh, production of financial statements in accordance with the Code of Practice and our Local Audit and Accountability Act. Moving on to section 4.3, which shows how we have responded to a number of key recommendations that are outlined in Appendix C of the report on page 114, electronic page 118. Happy to take questions. Uh, members, might it be an idea if we actually uh, invite uh, Barry Morris or David Johnson to actually speak? Uh, at this point in the meeting, and then we can ask questions, possibly of, of, of everyone. Do you agree with that? I'll just take that as a yes. Um, can I invite uh, our auditors uh, to actually speak, please? Okay, hopefully everybody can hear me. Yes, thank you, Aaron. Um, Welcome to the meeting. Thank you. So, um, as Shannon set out, we've um, provided our audit opinion on the 30th of the 30th of March. Um, there were some last minute challenges, not least the, um, the pandemic and the fact that we needed to do a little bit of extra work around the going concern element of that. But officers responded very promptly, which enabled us to issue our audit opinion on that on that date. Um, we will be producing an annual audit letter, which will come to your next uh, committee meeting together with the audit plan for 2019-20 as well. So um, from our perspective, the, the audit has been completed. We've got a, a meeting that's going in the diary to talk about the lessons that can be learned from that um, and also uh, prepare us for the 2019-20 audit, which is uh, getting underway very shortly. Happy to take any questions, Chair. Thank you very much, Barry. Uh, members, uh, any questions, uh, please, of uh, Shannon Coleman Slaughter or Barry Morris? Please feel free to ask. Councillor Adrian Abbs. Councillor Abbs, will you please proceed? Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, it's really uh, related to um, one of the assessment issues that are rated as high, and it it's, was to do with the revaluing of. Um, the assets um, during um, uh, a previous phase. Obviously, given what's going on right now, I'd like to understand the auditor's opinion of what we can be doing, because there's, there's almost bound to be a, quite a large effect, given what's happening to industry and the country in, uh, in total during this coming fiscal year. So that, and do they think it will remain high based on the likely large changes to be made in property and income and all sorts of other investments that are that are going on as a result of COVID. Would Chair, you happy to speak on this one? Give your your view on this. Chair, happy to initially and then um, hand over to officers. So 
Um, thank you, Councillor, for the question. Uh, you're absolutely right. There are two key areas where there is um, enhanced risk at this time. The first around property, plants and equipment, um, and the second around the valuation of both pension liabilities and pension assets, where there will be increased scrutiny. If we look at property, plants and equipment, there's, um, again, two particular areas. The first is around your operational assets and the consideration of the value of your operational assets that you have and whether there's any impairment in relation to their value there and the, uh, and the uh, BCIS index that we use to value that. The second and, and perhaps uh, critically important is around the valuation of any investment properties that you have and looking at the value of those. And there's likely, uh, we would anticipate at this time to be some significant impairment in those values. And again, what we will be doing is using, looking at the council's valuation approaches and their valuers um, response to that, as well as using our own experts uh, to verify whether or not the, the valuations proposed by the council um, are appropriate. It's important to note that the valuation will of course be at the 31st of March um, and when we get to deliver our audit opinion and actually sign off the accounts we'll be a few months away from that period so there may well be a non-adjusting post balance sheet event note disclosing the updated value is valuation there but yes it's a it's a critical area of scrutiny and risk for us. Thank you. Uh, Barry. Shannon do you wish to actually Comment on that at all? Um, no, thank you, Chair. Shannon, Shannon, ladies first. <laughs> no, thank you, Chair. Um, we are currently working with our valuers to go through um, the valuations that have been undertaken this year in accordance with our, our valuation schedule. Um, so I can't comment on what they actually say at the moment, but we are working through it. Um, and the valuers are being um, very helpful at this point. So we have taken on board the recommendations and we are working closely with the values at the moment. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Joseph, you were indicating you were wishing to speak, uh, possibly. Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, and, and just in response as well uh, on the point around the post balance sheet event, um, that is something that we will be looking at very closely uh, because just to update since this report was finalised, is it is mentioned at the end of the report um, that we've had a confirmation that the final deadline for us to produce the accounts now go to the end of August and then for the auditors it's all the way through to the end of November. Now, we ideally don't want to get as as far out as, as either of those dates, but with that lengthening of the both uh, the, the, the lengthening of the period of both the production of the accounts and the auditing of the accounts, it means that there's more and more scope for a post balance sheet event because um, well, you know, whatever happens with COVID nineteen, it will then have a it will have a longer term impact probably on our accounts uh, than if than if we close them in a much shorter period of time. Thank you, Jersey. Members, um, do you wish to actually sort of make any comments or raise any queries? Councillor James Cole has his hand up, Jim. Yes, please proceed. Thank you, Chairman. Um, at a macro level, I'm delighted to see that this looks like a success story in the sense that the issues have been resolved. I've got a few issues of minor detail, if I may raise them about the document. Yes, please proceed. Okay, page 99, 103 electronic, 5.5, 6. How can a recommendation be both ongoing and achieved? Should we do these one by one? Yes, please. Can the office, one of the officers please respond to that? Julie, is that, uh, is that your field of fire? No, Jay, that's that 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 would be my myself. Uh, I'm, I'm just trying to see on page 99. Oh, is it the the, the final one? Three uh, electronic. Yeah. Five point five six. Yes. Um, uh, we will reflect on that. Thank you, uh, Councillor. Um, obviously, there's there's two IFRS standards um, there, so we will reflect on which one of those is is achieved, <laughs> which one is ongoing. Right, thank you. Um, page 
uh, there's, in a number of places, the term CIES comes up. It's used a number of times before it's actually linked to its meaning on page 111, 115 electronic. It would be helpful if we could have such acronyms explained at the beginning of such documents for non-accountants like me. That one doesn't need a reply. Um, page 103, 107 electronic, changes in accounting policy, note XX. And you get the same thing on the next page at the end of revenue expenditure funded by capital under statute, note XX. Is that something that needs to be completed? Yeah, um, thank you, Chair, if I, I answer that one. Um, so that, th this is the, um, when we uh, certify the financial statements, uh, I said we have to do that by the end of August this year, this year um, these accounting policies go into the final copy of the financial statements. So we will cross reference it at that point uh, to whichever note it will be. So, so it, it's purely as we do the formatting and the financial statements that we're picking up. Right. Okay. Um, and the only other one I'll bother with today, page 114, 118 electronic. Number one. Number one gives a recommendation that all be revalued to ensure compliance with code requirements. But the response is that six were not revalued as by code guidance, which is right. I am confused. Joseph, would you like to respond to that? I will. I'm just. Uh, thank you, Chair. I'm just searching for it in the uh, pack. 118 electronic. Yeah. I think we're highlighting there that they, that that initially they were not revalued in line with the code, but at, but for the final for the final financial statements they were, and that we've picked that up for the for the year ahead as well. It's that phrase in line with the code, but okay, we'll let it go. Thank you. Thank you. Members, uh, has anybody got anything else they wish to raise? Shannon, Shannon and Coleman Slaughter has her hand raised. Right, please proceed, Shannon. Um, no apologies, I hit that button and Joseph answered. So I was just going to provide an answer, but Joseph has already answered. Right, you are. Thank you very much indeed. I assume that that is uh, all we need to uh, deal with. Um, Chairman, should we really need to take standing orders? Yeah. Sorry, please proceed, Jeremy Cotton. Yeah, sorry, should we reinstate standing orders? That's, I was just going to raise this, yes. Sorry, apologies. Just asking, I was just about to, to actually ask our... Um, the vice chair's job. Whether, do we need a vote to reinstate uh, standing orders? I think, believe we do. Yeah, I think uh, you don't. You just you just need uh, to bring the meeting back into standing orders. So you can just propose uh, that the meeting um, um, uh, goes in. Uh, that the standing orders are uh, uh, are to be reinstated. Do we need to take a vote on? I don't believe you do. Well, should we take one just to be cast on? Right. Could I have a proposal, please, and a seconder uh, that we reinstate uh, standing orders? No proposed, Chair. Thank you. And the seconder, please. I'll second it. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Shiraz, do you wish to take a, a vote on this? You don't need to. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty okay. sure that you don't need to take. A right, vote. You are. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much indeed. Um, in that case, uh, members, thank you. Um, we've had a, a sort of fairly full discussion on this particular agenda item. Um, the uh, uh, agenda asks us to just note that the report be noted, um, and uh, there is no need to vote on this particular item. Um, Duly noted, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Seconded. Thank you. Uh, can I say our special thanks to Barry Morris for his contribution today. Um, 
Uh, and I believe that is actually all the business uh, we have to deal with this afternoon. And I thank everyone for attending. And um, thank you very much indeed for the way in which you've actually proceeded through this first trial meeting. Uh, thank you all. Uh, I declare the meeting is now closed at 17.16, I believe. Thank you all. Good evening. Thank you, Chairman.